I am Brother Stephen Elabo, welcoming you to the Life Bible Church, Charlottesville, United States, a place where the undiluted Word of God is being preached. You are about to listen to our general superintendent, Pastor W.F. Kumoye, as a comfort to share the mind of God with you and your family. I want you to be ready to pick up your pen and your paper and jot down important messages as they will do you good. God bless you and remain blessed. The Lord. Tonight, I want to encourage the people of God to release the power in your life already. Power will be released in your life. Every mountain will move away. All those impossible situations, they're going to be fulfilled. They're going to be done tonight in Jesus' name. I'm talking to you on releasing God's power through His empowered people releasing God's power through his empowered people God has empowered us already and because of that power that he has put in our lives we're going to release that power great things are going to be done Matthew chapter 10 I'm reading from verse 1 all these verses will show us and will tell you there is power in our lives already and more power is coming. Matthew chapter 10, verse 1. And when he had called unto him his 12 disciples, he gave them power. He gave them power. He gave them, tell me, power against unclean spirits to cast them out and to heal all manner of sickness and all manner of disease. Here you find that the power that Christ gives to his people is not a kind of limited power. It's a kind of power that casts out all devils, a kind of power that heals all sicknesses, a kind of power that delivers from all diseases. Luke chapter 10. In Luke chapter 10, we're reading from verse 19. Luke chapter 10, verse 19. It says, Behold, I give unto you power. Again, you can see the generosity of the Lord. You can see the ability of the Lord. And you can see that the Lord is thinking the best concerning you. And it says, Behold, I give unto you power to tread on serpents and scorpions. Those as spiritual dark powers. Serpents and scorpions, you will tread upon them. And over all the power of the enemy, there is no power of the enemy that will take effect in your life. Tonight, you are going to be more than a conqueror in Jesus' name. Then he says, and nothing shall by enemies hurt you all hindrance all poison all the things of the devil they are taking away from your life tonight in jesus name luke chapter 24 in luke chapter 24 reading from verse 49 and behold i send the promise of my father upon you but tarry ye in the city of Jerusalem until ye be endued with power from on high. You can see in all these passages of scripture how Jesus Christ gave power. And then he promised more power. And he said he will endue them with power from on high. Acts 
chapter 1, verse 8. It now tells us the source of that power, that it is the power of the Holy Ghost, the power of the Spirit. That's what you have tonight. I said that is what you are having tonight. Acts chapter 1, verse 8. But you shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost is come upon you. When the Holy Ghost comes upon you, he will cancel, he will destroy any other negative power working against your life. The power of Satan will be neutralized. The power of evil spirits will be broken and destroyed. And all the power of enemies in your life, they are crushed and cancelled tonight in Jesus' name. But you shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you. And you shall be witnesses unto me both in Jerusalem and in all Judea and in Samaria and unto the uttermost part of the earth. If you have taken notice very well, you will see that the passages we have read, Matthew chapter 10, Luke chapter 10, Luke chapter 24, and Acts chapter 1. They have that word power. That is the energy of the Spirit. The strength of the Lord. The might of the Almighty. Before He empowers us, number one, He enlists us. He calls us. Many are called, but few are chosen. When you respond to the call of God, and you say, I hear him calling my name. He called Moses, Moses. The same way he's calling your name. He called Samuel, Samuel. The same way he's calling your name. He called Simon, Simon. The same way he's calling your name. When he calls you, he calls you to repentance. He calls you to relationship with him. He calls you to righteousness. And as you turn away from your sin, and you turn to the Lord, he brings you into the kingdom. Step number one, you are enlisted at conversion. Enlisted at conversion. You are converted. The New Testament says, you are born again. And because of that being born again, you are enlisted into his kingdom. And that enlistment is because of the conversion. Number one, enlisted at conversion. Number two, as you come into the kingdom of God, he doesn't leave you like that. He equips you. And you are equipped by the captain of our salvation. He is the captain. He's the one that called you. And the captain calls you to victory. He calls you to conquest. He calls you to overcome. And because you are enlisted at conversion, he now equips you as your captain. Number three, he doesn't only enlist you and equip you. He wants you to do something. Number three, engaged in his commission. Engaged in his commission. He engages you and your life is going to be profitable. Your life is going to be fruitful. When you come into the kingdom and you are now involved in the commission of the Lord, enlisted, equipped, engaged, it is then, it is that engagement that requires and demands that you have power in your life 
Number four, empowered for conquest. He puts something in your life and assures you that you cannot fail and you will not fail. And as we are here tonight, I want to assure you, the power of the Lord will pull you over. You are passing over all the shadows of defeat, all the situations of the past that made you to feel as if will I ever succeed. Cheer up. Today, success has begun in your life in Jesus' name. Empowered for conquest. Number five. Enveloped or endued through consecration. Now that you know there is a conflict, there is a battle, there is a commission, there is something to do. And you address yourself to what is to be done. He now induces you with power. He envelopes you with power. He surrounds you with power. At the point of your consecration, you lay everything on the altar. You say, Jesus and I, we're going to labor together. Jesus and I, we're going to live together. Jesus and I, we're going to succeed together. You are in the same boat with the Lord. That boat will not sink. That boat will not capsize. You are going to see victory in your life from this night on in Jesus' name. Enlisted at conversion, equipped by the captain, engaged in his commission, empowered for conquest, endued, enveloped through consecration. Number six, energized for confirmation. There's going to be a confirmation in your life. Every promise of God will be confirmed in your life. Every desire that you have, there's going to be a fulfillment in Jesus' name. The energy of the Holy Ghost, the power of the Holy Ghost will see to it that every promise of God in your life from tonight is fulfilled in Jesus' name. Number seven, enabled to conquer. Enabled to conquer. I see Concross there tonight. Enabled to conquer. I see Concross in front of me here tonight. Enabled to conquer. You will conquer. You will conquer sin. I said you will conquer sin. You will conquer sickness. Check your body. Any sickness you find there now. When we finish this empowerment session, and then I pronounce the blessing of God on your life, that sickness is gone in Jesus' name. If your eyes are blind, your eyes, blind eyes will open. If there's any deafness in one ear or two ears, the deafness will vanish away. If there is anything they call incurable disease, Tonight, you are healed in Jesus' name. Enabled to conquer sin. Enabled to conquer sickness. Enabled to conquer Satan. Satan is defeated in your life. Those are the steps that will lead you to total victory and total triumph. And you're going to be victorious and triumphant in the name of Jesus. Releasing God's power through his empowered people. Three things we're going to consider before we pray. Number one, endowment of power from on high. The endowment of power from on high. Power is available for you. Power is available for your wife. Power is available for your husband. Power is available for your family. Endowment of power from on high. Number two, 
empowerment for the period of harvest empowerment for the period of harvest you'll have noticed all these testimonies were hearing dating from long long ago until this year and the testimonies of this weekend will be multiple testimonies in jesus name this is harvest time harvest of miracles harvest of revival harvest of soul winning harvest in the work of the lord it is harvest time so we need number two empowerment for the period of harvest number three enable enablement of his people for healing enablement of his people for healing on the one hand if you are sick tonight is the night of your healing any deformity there tonight is the night of recreative miracle in your life in jesus name any affliction there tonight is the night of deliverance in your life in jesus name any oppression, any yoke, tonight, yoke is going to be broken. You'll be taken away from all the captivity of the devil, even tonight, in Jesus' name. The enablement of his people for healing. So on the one hand, you will get healed, no problem. The second, on the other hand, God will make you a miracle worker. You will lay hands on the sick and they will recover. You'll speak the word of power and authority. And all those things tormenting people around you by the command of faith coming out of your mouth, brother, sister. All those people, they'll be delivered in Jesus' name. Three things. Number one, endowment of power from on high. We're going back to Luke chapter 24, endowment of power from on high. Here the Lord spoke to his own people, and thank God, I'm one of his people. I said, I am one of his people. If you're a child of God, if you're a follower of Jesus Christ, if you're born again, if your sins have been forgiven, if the Spirit of God is bearing witness in your heart, that's why, child of God, you are one of the people of God, and there is power waiting for you here tonight. Luke chapter 24, verse 49. And behold, I send the promise of my Father upon you. This is the one, when he makes a promise, he does not forget. When he makes a promise, he does not go back on that promise. He fulfills the promise, for God is not a man that he should lie. Neither the son of man that he should repent. As he said, and shall he not do it? As he spoken, and will he, will he not bring it to pass? Every promise the Lord made in the past, he fulfilled. And this promise is going to be fulfilled on your life tonight. Jesus Christ the same yesterday and today and forever and his promise will be yes and amen in your life even tonight and behold I send the promise of my father upon you but tarry ye in the city of Jerusalem you may wonder about that he was talking to his own disciples who saw him face to face. For them, their Jerusalem was where they were. For us, your Jerusalem is a place where you are now and you are tarrying before the Lord. This is your Jerusalem. I said, this is your Jerusalem. And for those who are far away there listening to me hearing my voice, that place is your Jerusalem. The power will reach you there. The glory will reach you there. 
the miracle will reach you there tarry ye in the city of jerusalem until 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 ye be endued with power from on high why did he tell them that because there was negative power from beneath and you need the power from on high to cancel and to crush all the power from beneath you are going to discover tonight that power is coming from on high and every other kind of power coming from below coming from beneath all those other powers they're destroyed in jesus name there is a passage in the old testament micah chapter 3 if you know where it is just open to micah chapter 3 near the end of the old testament if you cannot find it don't worry i'll read it to you micah chapter 3 verse 8 but truly i am full of power but truly i am full of power here is micah saying but truly i am full of power what micah said you will say what micah experienced you will experience what was true in the life of Micah at that time? Today, you are the man of the hour. Today, you are the woman of the hour. What was true about him that day will be true about you today in Jesus' name. Truly, I am full of power by the Spirit of the Lord and of judgment and of might to declare unto Jacob his transgression and to Israel his sin. What I want you to notice here is, he said, I am full of power. It's like when you are packing something into a box. When the box is full, there is no space for any other thing there. And here when it says, Micah said, truly, I am full of power. There is no space for weakness in your life from tonight. There is no room anymore for timidity or fear in your life from tonight. You are full already. You are full of power. Power that heals. The power that saves. The power that destroys the works of the devil. The power that breaks the yoke. Tonight, I pronounce you full in Jesus' name. Your heart your soul your spirit be filled in jesus name until you can say in the day and in the night before any challenge in your life truly i am full of the power of the spirit of the lord may you be full in jesus name let me show you a practical example of a new testament believer like you like me that was also full full of power let's look at acts of the apostles chapter 6 acts chapter 6 verse 8 as we read this we transfer it to your life acts chapter 6 verse 8 and stephen full of faith and power and Stephen full of faith and power can I remind you once again if you have a bottle and you fill that bottle with water there is no space for any other thing any contrary thing in that bottle anymore and when it says and Stephen full of faith and full of power that means when you are full of faith there is no room for doubt or unbelief in your heart. And I pronounce you full of faith tonight in Jesus' name. Unbelief, go away. Doubting, go away. Fear, go away. Uncertainty, go away in Jesus' name. Because now, as Stephen was full of faith, you are full of faith. 
What's the consequence? If somebody is full of faith and full of power, what's the next thing? Look at verse 8. The consequence is this. He did great wonders and miracles among the people. That's why tonight, there are great wonders going to happen here. I said there are great miracles going to take place here. Because you and I are full of faith and full of power. And therefore, there's no doubt. Therefore, there's no unbelief. There's no, therefore, there's no uncertainty. Full of faith, full of power. We do great miracles, signs, and wonders. Second Timothy chapter 1. Second Timothy chapter 1. Verse 7, for God has not given us the spirit of fear. Anything God has not given, we reject. Anything God has not given, we throw away. Anything God has not given, we cast it out. And tonight, God has not given you the spirit of fear. You will not be afraid. You know, it's when somebody is afraid, will be asking, will I be healed? Will I not be healed? Will I prosper? Will I not prosper? Will I succeed? Will I not succeed? It's afraid. Will I move on? Will I not move on? It's afraid. All the spirit of fear, I command you, get out in Jesus' name. For God has not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. All that disturbance in your mind, everything is cancelled tonight. All that harassment of the devil in your spirit, in your soul, in your brain, all the heat and the hotness of the brain, we cancel that tonight in Jesus' name. Because tonight is the night for the conqueror. Tonight is the night for those who are more than conquerors in Christ, in Jesus' name. Now, we we'll look at Romans chapter 8. Romans chapter 8. This is what you are waiting for tonight. When you are empowered by the Lord himself, and deal with power from on high, here is what is going to happen. In Romans chapter 8, verse 37, Nay, in all these things, tell me, we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. It says, nay. The devil is trying to say, do you think you are going to get anything? You say, shut up, Satan. I've got it already. Are you going to be healed? Shut up, Satan. I'm healed already. Are you going to get well? Shut up, Satan. I'm well already. Are you going to have your miracle baby? Shut up, Satan. I have my miracle baby already. Am I talking about you? Are you, are you built for a miracle tonight? Shut up, Satan. I have my miracle tonight. It is confirmed in Jesus' name. Nay. In all these things, in the midst of conflict, in the midst of battle. Nay, in all these things, in the midst of calamities, in the midst of conflict. Nay, in all these things, in the midst of enemies, in the midst of opposers. Nay, in all these things, in the midst of sickness and disease. Nay, in all these things, in the midst of oppression and attack. Nay, in all these things, in the midst of yokes and curses. Nay, in all these things, we are more than conquerors, not because of us, but through him. He's conquered for us already. He's overcome for us already through him that loved us. He will manifest that love in your life tonight. Point number two, empowerment for the period of harvest. There are many people that do not understand that there are different seasons and different times, different eras and different periods. And they treat every period the same. 
But as you can notice already, from all these miracles we are hearing about, is a special period in this church. And this special period will not pass you by in Jesus' name. The latter rain is falling. It will fall in your house. The latter rain is falling. It will fall in your family. Rain of blessing. Rain of miracle. Rain of deliverance. Rain of healing. Rain of holiness. The latter rain, as the latter rain is falling at the time of the harvest, this latter rain will not pass you by. <laughs> Jeremiah chapter 5. Jeremiah chapter 5. I'm reading from verse 24. Jeremiah chapter 5. We're reading from verse, 20, from verse 24. Empowerment for the period of harvest. Look at this, Jeremiah chapter 5, verse 24. Neither say they in their heart, let us now fear the Lord our God. They are given three, both the former and the latter. I told you, latter rain, former rain, latter rain. Then it says, both the former and the latter. In his season, he reserveth unto us the appointed weeks of the harvest. It's a special period. He has reserved unto us the appointed weeks of the harvest and the concern of the Almighty God for the children of Israel is that they did not recognize the appointed weeks of the harvest. They didn't see that the former rain had been given and the latter rain was coming, pouring down upon them. I pray that God will give you eyes to see, mind to understand that this is a special period of harvest, harvesting of souls into the kingdom. You are involved, I am involved, we are involved together. This work will prosper in your hand. In Matthew chapter 9, Matthew chapter 9, the time of the harvest, the period of the harvest is connected, associated and related with the period of power. The appointed weeks of the harvest and the appointed anointing and the appointed power for that harvest. In Matthew chapter 9, reading from verse 35, and Jesus went about all the cities and villages, teaching in their synagogues, and preaching the gospel of the kingdom, and healing, and healing, and healing every sickness and every disease among the people. As Jesus changed, as your God changed, as his mercy changed, as his power changed, some people say the age of miracles is past. I pity them. They are saying that what Jesus did before, he cannot do today in their lives. I want to announce to you that what Jesus did before, he will do today in your life. Because his power will never change. Jesus Christ the same. Yesterday, today, and forever. His name is still working miracles. Because he has not changed. He cannot change. He went about all the cities and all the villages. And he's still doing the same. He's going about right now. All the cities and all the villages. All the cities and all the villages where we are congregated together tonight. In the city over here. In the city over there. In the village over there. Anywhere you are now. Where you are hearing Jesus is there. His name is being glorified. 
and you are hearing the message, it will be right there with you. And what you did before, it will do even tonight. Teaching, that's what we're doing now. Preaching, that's what we're doing now. And then, after the teaching and the preaching, we'll see what follows. Healing every sickness and every disease among the people. Verse 36. But when he saw the multitudes, he was moved with compassion upon them. His compassion means his mercy, his concern, his love. And the love of Jesus changed? No. As his compassion changed? No. It was compassion that moved him in those days to heal the sick. And the compassion is still there. And the love is still there. And the concern is still there. And the mercy is still there. He will heal you today. Because they fainted. And they were scattered abroad. A sheep having no shepherd. Then says Jesus unto his disciples, The harvest truly is plenteous. I told you, this is the period of the harvest. There are many souls in need. There are many souls searching for salvation. Searching for healing. Searching for deliverance. It's a time of the harvesting of souls. The harvest truly is plenteous. But the laborers are few. Verse 38. Pray ye therefore. The Lord of the harvest. That ye will send forth laborers into his harvest. Look at the next verse. Next verse is chapter 10 verse 1. And when he had called unto him his twelve disciples. He gave them power. He just spoke about the harvest now. And immediately after that. He now gave them power. He gazed on clean spirits to cast them out and to heal all manner of sickness and all manner of disease. He will do it again. Luke chapter 10. Luke chapter 10. The connection between the power and the harvest. The power and the harvest. Luke chapter 10, verse 2. Therefore, said he unto them the harvest truly is great but the laborers are few pray ye therefore the lord of the harvest that he will send forth laborers into his harvest you say i thought we read that before no uh -uh. didn't we read it in matthew chapter 9 that one was spoken to the 12 disciples, the apostles. In this case now, this is spoken to the 70. Look at verse 1. After these things, the Lord appointed other 70 also. The 12 were not enough, sufficient to capture and to reap and to bring in all the harvest available. That's why he needed more. He now spoke to the 70 also. And he sent them two and two. Before his face. Into every city and every place. Whither he himself would come. Therefore said he unto them. The harvest truly really is great. And the laborers are few. Look at the power. Verse 19. Behold. These 70 investors, behold, these 70 newcomers into the harvest force. Harvesting force. Behold, I give unto you power to tread on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy. And nothing, praise the Lord. And nothing, I said, praise the Lord. And nothing, I said, praise the Lord. As you think about yourself, nothing from the devil will hurt you anymore. Nothing from evil spirits will hurt you anymore. Nothing from any enemy will hurt you anymore. All those sicknesses that you thought will take your life, 
God forbid. They will not take your life anymore in Jesus' name. The poison of the enemy tonight is neutralized in your life. And nothing shall by any means hurt you. Nothing shall by any means hurt you. Personalize it. Nothing shall by any means hurt me. Say that again. Your enemies have failed. The poisons are neutralized. All the things that have destroyed your life, they will not destroy you anymore in Jesus' name. Empowerment for the period of harvest. Point number three. Enablement of his people for healing. The enablement of his people for healing. I need to tell you something here. This enablement you are going to have tonight is going to work multiple miracles in your life. The enablement tonight is not a one directional uh, kind of enablement. It's a multiple, multi-directional miracle working power in our lives in Jesus' name. All five or six shouts of miracle. In the children's section, shouts of miracle. Everywhere, shouts of miracle in Jesus' name. Among our victorious youth, shouts of miracle in Jesus' name. And for those who are watching by television and those who are listening over the radio, get ready. The miracle power is coming your way right now. Multi, multiple directional miracle tonight in Jesus' name. Listen to this enablement of his people, number one, for healing. Number two, enablement of his people for health. It is one thing to get healed. It is another thing to remain permanently healthy. Permanently healthy. I'm looking at people who are apparently healthy tonight. Permanent. I said permanent. That no trace of sickness will be found from the top of your head to the tip of your toe. Totally healthy in Jesus' name. Number three, enablement of his people for holiness. Everybody shout, holiness. This one, it will not be, I am trying to be holy. The power to be holy is injected into your life in Jesus' name. Then, enablement of his people for happy homes. Happy homes. Happiness in your family. Unity in your family. Peace in your family. All the fire of the devil burning in any family tonight. I stop that fire in Jesus' name. Number one, the enablement is for healing. Number two, the enablement is for health. Number three, the enablement is for holiness. Number four, the enablement is for happy homes. Number four. Number five, enablement of his people for higher heights. Higher heights. I'm going higher. I said I'm going higher. I said I'm going higher. We're going to leave the low land of mediocrity and we're going to go to higher, higher heights of promotion in Jesus' name. Number six, enablement of his people for wholeness. Everybody say wholeness. There's no subtraction in your life from tonight. Everything you have lost, you'll take it back. Everything missing in your life, you'll take it back. Anything missing in your brain, you'll take it back. Anything missing in your family, you'll take it back. Everything you have lost, you are having restoration in Jesus' name. I cannot end this without telling you there is enablement of his people for heaven. Enablement of his people for heaven. Enablement of his people for heaven. You will get there. I said you will get there. Say, I will get there. 
In Jesus' name. The enablement of his people for healing. There is healing tonight. I said there is healing tonight. Exodus, I'm reading chapter 15. And we're looking at verse 26. Exodus chapter 15. We're looking at verse 26. It says, And said, If thou shalt diligently hearken to the voice of the Lord thy God, and will do that which is right in his sight, and will give ear unto his commandments, and keep all his statutes, I will put none of these diseases upon thee, which I have brought upon the Egyptians. For I am, not I was, I am, not I will be, I am the Lord that healeth thee. Tonight is our healer. I said tonight is our healer. Every sickness of Egypt is taken away from you. Egypt represents the world. The diseases that come upon the people of the world. The smokers in the world. The smokers disease will not be upon you. The drunkards disease will not be upon you. The idol worshippers disease will not be upon you. All the diseases that have come upon you when you are in the world, if they are still there tonight, they will be taken away. Anything coming from the world, anything coming from Egypt, anything coming from Satan, anything coming from idol worship, everything is taken away tonight. Because there is enablement of his people for healing. We're looking at Second Kings. Second Kings chapter 20. Second Kings chapter 20. From verse 1. In those days, Ezekiah was sick unto death. Ezekiah became sick. And the sickness was so serious, he was about to die. But thank God, something will turn around. In verse 1, and the prophet Isaiah, the son of Amos, came unto him and said, Thus says the Lord, Search thine house in order, for thou shalt die and not live. There are some people that carry negative prophecies on their mind. Negative dreams on their mind. Some people, they see those who have died many years ago. And those who have died will be beckoning to them, come, come. And then when they wake up, it's like a negative prophecy. It's like your time is up. But you are going to do what Ezekiah did. And you are going to have the miracle of Ezekiah in your life from this very night. If you have been thinking that all those negative prophecies of the prophets, whether they are good prophets or bad prophets, whether they are true prophets or they are false prophets, whether they are nearby prophets or far away prophets, all their prophecies, if they are negative tonight, they are cancelled from your life. Thank God the Lord has remembered you. And the Lord has said, all those negative things you are carrying in your mind, you are going to drop everything down here today. <laughs> Isaiah said, set thine house in order, for thou shalt die and not live. Then he turned his face to the wall and prayed unto the Lord. He turned his face unto the wall. Well, better still, you can turn your face, not to the wall, but turn your face to the Lord. Better still, you can turn your face, not to the